we'll, we'll get them. I uh, just uh, got an email about it this morning, as a matter of fact. A couple more quick things here. Scorpions singer Klaus Meine has undergone emergency kidney stone surgery, ouch, in Melbourne, Australia, which had forced the band to postpone a Saturday night concert in Sydney, Australia. The rock frontman tells fans via social media, quote, it was a very painful attack in the hospital. They removed the stone and put in a stent. Can you imagine how I feel right now? Scorpions are currently on tour with Whitesnake for a number of shows in Australia and New Zealand, though late reports state that they've rescheduled that Sydney show, but have had to cancel outright a gig in Auckland, New Zealand. Yep, good. Well, Klaus, and that was some unfortunate news that came down, but uh, he seems he's posted a picture on his so social media of him giving the thumbs up in his hospital bed. So I'm, I'm assuming he's feeling better, and that's a good thing. He can't and be Klaus, in too much pain. And yeah, Klaus and the Scorpions are scheduled to be here in L.A. starting next month. When he was on with me last month, he said March, April, they were scheduled to be here in L.A. recording a record. Yes. So hopefully as soon as he's feeling up to it, he should be getting on a plane coming here to Los Angeles to make a new Scorpions record. And that's ahead of the Vegas residency in July? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, hopefully we'll wrangle those guys. I told Klaus when he was on, if you guys were listening, we got to do an L.A. invasion with him. Hopefully we can make that happen. And Judas Priest have plotted out a 50th anniversary tour with arena and theater dates set for the U.S. this September and October. They'll receive opening support from Sabaton. Priest were originally set to tour later on in the fall in Europe with Ozzy Osbourne. On the latter is now canceled. No more tours to tour. Uh, I'm sorry, Ed, I'm dealing with Luke, who's not what? here yet. What, what were you saying about the, 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 the priest, priest thing? The priest? Yes. Yes, the tour. So so that was announced. Where the hell is obviously. Luke? Uh, he says he's late, but then that runs into someone else's time, and I told him we had a certain window. Yeah, this, this, this mofo really is a rock star. He is living oh it up God. in LA. He's going to come walking in here with his cape. Um, a bottle of Jack <laughs> Daniels in his hand. Hey, the party's here! How's it going, Eddie, my old chum? Priest, 50th anniversary tour. Mm -hmm. I've told you my thoughts about any band jumping the gun on anniversaries. <laughs> I understand Judas Priest may have formed in 1970 in some high school or something in England. We all think of Priest really starting around 75, 76, because most people, including myself, look at anniversaries of the year the first, the, the first album came out. But more and more bands are doing it a little earlier than that because it's a good marketing angle. It's another marketing hook. Um, you know, I, 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 I ran looking down the pre states. There's some things that jumped out at me. First of all, the opening act is a band called Sabaton. Now, Judas Priest have the, the venues they're playing on these dates are wildly different in size. They are. There's a couple arenas and then there's a couple theaters. And then, a, a, so I believe, a, and, and a casino too. Yeah, so it's a very different mix of sized venues. And if we're being honest, Judas Priest's draw in America has always been somewhere as a straight headline, I would think now somewhere around, I don't know, four to 6,000 people. When they go into arenas, they usually pull the stage up or have to close upper levels or whatever. A lot of bands have to do that. I get it. There's no, there's no shame in that. But I don't know why you still go into an arena to do that. But we've talked about it before with all this fluctuating pricing, <laughs> you know, anybody can play anywhere pretty much because they find a way to fill the seats and put people in them. So there's that. The other thing is Sabaton to me is a curious choice as an opening act, because although they are a very well-respected sort of European power metal band, not exactly a huge draw in America. And you could say the same thing with past priest openers, Black Star Riders, bands I love, by the way, but being honest, they play clubs here. Saxon is a club act. Black Star Riders, barely a club act, which is why they do all their work outside of Europe. They've, they are past priest openers. My point is, I think Judas Priest would benefit from having a really well-known drawing name opening act in front of them because it would help their sales and help their touring immensely in terms of their draw. But in recent years, they've put together for the pure metal fan, great packages, 
but not necessarily great packages to help sell tickets. And when you're out there and you're up against it, when it is such a competitive touring marketplace, every day, another show, another tour, another shed tour, another festival being announced, you got to stack as much meat on the bone as possible. And you're seeing it. That's why Kiss added David Lee Roth. And they are, st by the way, Kiss is closing off upper sections of arenas right now. Not making that up, not shit talking, just telling you the facts. Y you know, you don't close upper levels of arenas when you play them unless you are unable to sell them. <laughs> There's no other reason for it. You don't put on a name opening act on a tour and pay them. Unless you need them to help you sell tickets at that point in your career or tour. There's no shame in it. Everybody's doing it. So that's why I was just surprised at two things struck me about that uh, tour is very different sized venues, depending upon where you are in the country for the priest run and an opening act that. I, I don't think, unfortunately, although I am fully aware Sabaton has their fans and very well known and respected in the metal community and has been around for a long time, I would think a young up and coming band with a little sizzle and maybe some radio and maybe that brings something would have benefited them, but they don't ever seem to really do that. Same with Saxon and Black Star Riders. I love both of those bands, but they don't, they don't bring uh, really a big sales push to the events. So wish him nothing but the best. The other thing that's interesting is the, the ad mat that came out continues to show Glenn Tipton. And we all know KK is not involved and has not been welcomed back for it and is now going to do his own version of Judas Priest. But Glenn Tipton, man, I hope like hell he can do some of these shows. We'd love to see him. But we all know he really has not played much recently. I know technically it's still his band. I know technically they're still, you know, he's still going to have his imprint on another record. But fans have asked me about that uh, this morning when that press release went out. I heard from a number of people and they said, hey, Glenn Tipton's in this ad. Is he going to be playing with them? Unless Glenn has made a miraculous recovery, which, man, I would love to know if that's the case because that would be wonderful news. I can't see him being all that involved in the tour as far as playing live. I know for a while so, they had him coming out during the encore. Yeah, for a song or two. But the last run they did, he didn't come out at all or maybe at one show. So he's dealing, again, another guy, as we're all getting older, dealing with serious health issues here. And I think the viability of him really touring at this point is pretty remote, but he is being marketed in the tour poster for this run. Well, hell, Ozzy is saying he still wants to go out and tour once he's feeling better. It's absurd. I mean, it's absurd. Any Look, anybody can do what they want to do. It's up to you as fans. If you want to go see it and support it, you got to remember there's a side of this where everybody's just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Our band's still out there and whatever. But then you have to ask yourself, what is the product going to be? What I'm paying a tremendous amount of hard earned money to see these shows in most cases. What am I actually getting? I'm not just talking about the, I'm talking about this with all bands. You have to ask yourself this question across the board. What am I getting at this stage? How many people are in the band original? How many of the people are in the band that are still good and can still do what they used to do? How much of it is actually still real and not some pre-recorded nonsense? So there's a lot that you've got to look at because it's so competitive with your hard-earned money and what you're spending it on. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Priest Tour and how it does. And uh, I saw those guys on one of the dates on Firepower. They sounded great. And there is a you know bunch of people, myself included, that would have loved to have seen KK come back for the uh, you know 50th anniversary, but that's not happening. And assuming you're going to get Andy Sneap again on second guitar with Richie Faulkner, but we'll wait for more information. All right, we got.